Hello everyone and welcome to KDH Art Class. So today we are going to be focusing on a line and space project. It is a three-dimensional project. So here's a little more complex uh, 3D example. But as you can see, you can see it on how tall it is. That's one how wide it is, that's two, and how thick it is, that's three dimensions, 3D. If you have a drawing, you could see how tall it is or how wide it is, one and two, but you cannot see how thick it is. You have to use optical illusions to make things look three dimensional. So this project is a nice little change up. We've been doing a lot of two dimensional work with line and space. So this project, we are going to have positive space. That's these areas coming up and negative space. Those are the areas that are like going in. So I look at it as like I'm adding positive, like a little plus sign. I'm adding paper for positive, and I'm not adding paper. That would be minus or negative areas around it. Whatever you need to remember positive, adding, negative, taking away. Even my base has negative space because there's nothing in here. It's the letter H, and positive space which is the letter H itself. So, hopefully this will become a little bit easier to understand the more we do the artworks. Thank goodness elementary level is all about kind of the introduction to it. We're just barely touching the tip of the iceberg. But enough talk. You're going to need scissors. You need glue. Glue's Glue stick probably will not work well on this. I, I like the, the white glue. You're going to need construction paper cut into strips, depending on how skinny you want it. And I like to have something like a pencil or a straw or a stick, something I can wrap the paper around. Okay. Oh, and... I use part of a cereal box to be my base. Okay, and this one, my base is the letter H, because my name is Miss Howard. Miss Howard. And I just thought it was really pretty and fun to do. With this one, I'm going to do a heart, and this is my recycled recycle paper. So I started a project on it, and uh, I wanted this piece of cardboard, so I took the other stuff off and I'm reusing it. Okay, for those that cannot do symmetrical shapes very well, hearts, diamonds, even stars and stuff like that, here's a little secret. Trace out half of it and cut the half out. So I'm obviously going to do a heart. So there's half a heart. So with my pencil, and I like to move it over to the side so I'm not using up the whole piece of cardboard because obviously I keep recycling this stuff. I'm going to trace around the outside of my heart. And here's the fun part. Flip it over to the other side. And you can now trace around that side. And because it's symmetrical, the same on each side, you're going to have like the perfect shaped heart. Right? Symmetrical means this half is the same as that half. Symmetrical. Look at that. You're getting all kinds of math stuff going on here. All right, now that I have it traced out, I'm going to cut it out. Now, let me clarify. You do not have to do a heart. You do not have to do the letter H. You can do whatever shape you want. But you are going to want it to be big enough to glue on, again, 
reverting back to our example, you're going to want it thick enough that you can put stuff on there. Okay. All right. So I'm almost done cutting out my base. This is where everything's going to glue onto. Now you are more than welcome to take a piece of construction paper and, excuse me as I'm reaching, and you can glue it on and then cut it out so you have a nice little uh, background, which would have looked a lot better than the cardboard I'm using here. But I will let you decide on that. I'm just going to get you started on it. Here's an example of going out in that direction. Okay. And you get to decide all those details on your own. After all, this is your artwork, not mine. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way so I have a bigger work area. All right, so once you have your base, again, if you're going to glue on a color and you cut it out, then you have that green background. You are more than welcome to do that or whatever color you use. Okay. Now you need to go ahead and start cutting your pieces of construction paper. Again, I'm having to reach around and get stuff. Now what I did is my 9 by 12 inch construction paper, I'm cutting along the 12 inch side. You do not have to. You can choose to do the shorter side. And I like these skinnier, they're about a quarter inch thick cuts. That just makes it a lot easier. Somewhere around here I have one of those uh, slide cutters that they use for scrapbooking. That would be a wonderful little thing to have. Oh, I found it. It's right there next to my paper. You can always cut your pieces using one of these contraptions if you have it. This is a great thing to have around your house if you love working with bits and pieces of paper. If not, these will work. All right, so once I have it, 12 inches is a bit long, but I just did that one cut and now I can fold it in half and I can make six inch cuts or pieces. And I have a variety of colors, so now I can start figuring out how do you do this? This is called paper quilling with a Q-U-I-L-L-I-N-G, paper quilling. And you are taking pieces of paper and you are wrapping them around. Now the fancy people have the fancy tools because they really enjoy doing it uh, until you know if this is what you want to do. You are going to want to start with the cheap stuff. In my case, a stirring straw, coffee stirrer, pencil, wrap around it. When you let it go, you have your little shapes. Now, you can glue it on like that. You could, after you wrap it up, leave it in a tight coil. And let me zoom in here. There you go. So you're wrapping it up and you have this nice little coil. I actually let it open up a little bit and I pinched one side to make a teardrop shape, which happens to be really good for my little flowery petal shapes that I have here. So as you can see, they're kind of wrapped up and wrapped around. You could even just Twirl them around if you have nice small fingers. Add your glue. Remember when you're, whoopsie, when you're dealing with the liquid glue, you need to be patient. Don't add too much. 
I like to touch the tip to the item, in this case, my little paper quill area. And I need to hold it in place. And it's going to take about 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. If you have too much glue or not enough glue, too much glue takes longer than 10 seconds to dry. Not enough glue means it doesn't matter how long you hold it on there, it's not going to stick. You're going to have to make the adjustments. Uh, let's see. I did the folding one. I can show you that. So I took my paper and I just bent it down, kind of like I'm, I'm going to be rolling it, but I'm folding it. Now this one, I'm going to bend it and make sure it's a little bit bigger. So you see this is a little bit shorter and that's a little bit bigger. Okay. And then fold it again so it's a little bit bigger. Actually, pretty impressed. My camera's doing an okay job showing this stuff. Like, again, it's a little bit bigger. And fold it so it's a little bit bigger. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit here so you can see it better. Okay. And fold it so it's a little bit bigger. Fold it so it's a little bit bigger. So actually, if I can pull my middle out a little bit, you can see how they just, it's a little smaller and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. Okay, so that's my goal. Then I pinched both ends and I'm going to squish my fingers together carefully and it kind of folds it out to make a diamond shape. And of course I have to secure it. Not a lot. Again, I almost never squeeze my glue bottle. By the time I hold it over, it usually starts to come out. Um, or I might gently, barely, barely, barely squeeze on it. So as I lean it over, it's already ready to come out the top. And then it's almost like I'm just holding it and it comes out. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the different areas. And this, I thought, looked kind of like a leaf. So you have the petals and you have the leaf. And again, you got to do your 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. You can also uh, roll it. So this, I like to use my one little fingernail and keep kind of rolling it. It's almost like folding it in the beginning. There we go. And then, ah. like I had hardly any problems at all doing this until I recorded. Now it doesn't want to behave. So as you can see, I'm just rolling it up, rolling it up. And as it gets bigger, it gets a little bit easier. It should. There we go. I can even roll the other way a little bit so it's more like the letter S. And I can do half and half if I wanted to do that. So I'm going to unroll this a little bit so I can roll the other direction. And it'll make sense as soon as I let go. So, so I have like two little circles. And then as I let go, it's going to unwind a little bit and make a beautiful little spirally S shape. And
and a little bit of glue on the edges. So you can do S or you can keep it where it just stays in one direction. And then of course you can curl them both in the same direction. Um, the other one I used a thicker kind of a, a three-quarter one inch piece and rolled it around my straw or pencil in this case. So I have enough room for my scissors to go in and I made little bitty cuts oh about halfway almost so I can get two or even three more cuts I'll just do one more so this is how you can uh, make those little flowery daisy looking pieces now what I did do is uh, let it unwind a little bit so they weren't lined up and then when I squish it out it makes this nice little flowery shape and again I did several of those blues and whites and oranges in with my green little folded ones my uh, black ones are large letter S's I had some difficulties with the zigzag one so I just did one of those obviously did not enjoy that as much as wrapping it around my pencil and there are many many more ways of doing these so I want you to experiment with your paper lines and we're making our lines three-dimensional hold that don't forget your 10 count I think that's the part that just takes the longest seven six five four three you want to come undone I see it two I didn't hold that part and one zero and you can always use your pencil to carefully fluff it or squish it or whichever play around with it obviously I didn't hold it long enough it came undone so trying to think any other ways oh so my black ones I curled half of it in one direction pulled my pencil out and then half of it in the other direction ah come here and then when I pulled it out I opened it up and it made like this big S shape and that's what I kind of did with all of my black paper I started with those actually I started with this star shape in the middle the zigzag didn't want to uh, glue on there very well so I did a spiral and a little flower in there and then I did the pinched on one end petals everywhere with spirals in the middle and so feel free to get as creative as you like and fill in your shape with your paper quilling taking your lines <laughs> now I have my stuff here taking those lines which happen to be cut straight lines and creating space with them remember your space can be positive you're adding it or when you don't add things you're creating a negative space or you cut away your space so that's your negative and this is your positive I hope you enjoy this project Feel free to get as fancy and creative as you like and fill in the whole thing as much as possible. 
Enjoy.